Happy Tuesday. You are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. So not only am I live on MiamiMikeRadio.com, but I am also live in my Facebook group, um, Real Talk with Karen Stacy Facebook group. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, <laughs> it, it, I'm so silly. Uh, I guess I'm just an old lady and um, I'm not as tech savvy as, as I you know would like to be. Um, so I was trying to um, do a Facebook uh, live and add someone to the Facebook live. So it would be like a virtual guest. Um, and I probably should have gotten my nine-year-old to help me do that uh, because Spazol over here couldn't figure it out. And I actually um, had asked um, a tech support. I was I did my show uh, two weeks ago with uh, Rob Mush, um, one of our DJs, and uh, he did such a great job. We just put it. Oh my, my necklace is all crooked. We just did it. Um, I put it up on on uh, YouTube. And it was really cool and I got like so excited because it was just so awesome that I was trying to get fancy and I can't get fancy because I am lucky I can press buttons and even connect to, you know, the radio and everything else. So I need to check myself before I wreck myself, uh, which I always say, right? So, um... I'm trying, I'm trying to add somebody in and maybe anybody that knows, um, you know, anybody that, that knows me or whatever, you know, can help me guide through. Um, we are, you guys are the best um, in, in terms of like tagging and everything. I love you so much. Thank you, Gina. You are like the tagging monster. Um, so I appreciate it. And uh, today... So the funny thing about life is that, as we all know, because I've said this to you before, um, so much of life is plan B, right? So um, I had all good intentions um, of trying to, We I was supposed to have a guest, and unfortunately, um, you know, there was a uh, people get sick and these things happen and who can't make it and who this and who that so here you got me all to yourself again so either you want to kill yourself or you're going to rejoice it's going to be one or the other so you got me and uh we had a lot of stuff that i didn't get a chance to talk about um the last time believe it or not i went for like two hours and we really didn't get everything that we were supposed to get out out so i'm gonna address some more stuff let me take this off here because i don't really i can hear myself just fine um okay so i am going to ask you guys to be my guests and i'm going to ask you to interact with me so that um i'm not just talking to myself <laughs> for the next two hours um first of all uh, happy President's Week, day, whatever. It's not the day, right? Because everybody was off yesterday. Wait, no, today's month, Tuesday. Yeah. So, every, well, not everybody was off yesterday. And I apologize because a couple of people were like, well, I'm not off. And I apologize. Um, I have to say that I am in my glory because um, I don't have to wake up all week. So, my son is off from school. And um, when I get to shut my alarm off, uh, I am a happy beaver. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, yeah, like I'm happy. And it's funny, um, he actually had uh, an impromptu sleepover, which he really never does out of the house. And um, I didn't even end up going out. I was home and uh, I woke up. Are you ready for this? At 10.50 in the morning yesterday. 10.50 in the morning. Any of you that have children probably feel me when I say I woke up at 10.50. Because think, you know, when, when your kids are home, we all know how that goes. And you know what? No one sleeps with two eyes closed. Um, 
and I said, oh wait, Roger, I stay up too late. I wasn't actually. Sunday night, we were supposed to get that storm. So a lot of people didn't want to, you know, it was like, oh, let me not go out. It's supposed to be bad, blah, 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 which we all know that we should never listen to the weather people ever again. Um, and so uh, we were supposed to get the storm. We didn't get the storm. I kept saying, eh, I should go do something. And it just never happened. Um, and I was very comfortable on the couch. To be quite honest with you, I had uh, a bottle of wine. I poured myself a glass of wine and I said, I'm good. And I just chilled out at home. I watched Two and a Half Men. I giggled and eventually I went to sleep and I got like a solid, oh, geez, like 10 maybe or more hours of sleep. So that was really awesome. So, um, you know, I, I mean, of course I missed my little guy, but um, I was very happy for him that, um, you know, he was able to uh, have a fun sleepover. And yeah, I had some time to myself. It's funny, a lot of people that have met me now, um, I have this like reputation of being like a party animal or something. Everybody's like, oh, your social life, this, that, and the other. And I laugh. I mean, I have a little boy that I take care of. I don't, I, social life, I mean, yeah, sometimes I get out, but everybody thinks like where I go. I mean, I try and a lot of times I was going out because I just couldn't, you know, stay home and I didn't want to get into like a depression or whatever. But I mean, when I was married, I didn't go out. I didn't really feel the need to go out. And, um, you know, so it was the fact that, um, oh my goodness, I just realized that I was doing all of this tech stuff in here and I forgot to go and check <laughs> my poor son is like I was supposed to go back in the house and I never went in the house imagine that I got so caught up with the tech stuff that I forgot all right well now <laughs> this is so funny this is what happens this is why I should never try tech stuff all right well it is what it is um okay so I just lost my train of thought because I, I'm going to get mother of the year uh, because my son just asked me if I started the show or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, what I was saying is, is that I was never really one to go out. Um, I did. I went out with, you know, and I've been with a child for, you know, the past, it's going to be 10 years on Friday. So I don't know about any of you, but when you have a youngin at home, uh, that wakes up at five o'clock in the morning, you're not going out until five o'clock in the morning because, um, yeah, you're, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not a morning person. So if I was going out and I would come home banged up and it was like three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning and I was going to get an hour of sleep before my kid was waking up, I was going to kill myself. So um, I really didn't go out. And then once he got a little bit older that, you know, we could have gone out. Unfortunately, I lost my husband. So um, I wasn't able to uh, do that. So it is what it is. But yes, being home, I, I'm seeing a lot of people. I love being home. Um, and <laughs> yes, Richie, uh, it was the never ending. I, it, I, my bottle of wine was a magic bottle of wine. It was like the never ending bottle. I bought it on Valentine's Day, otherwise known in my household as Halloween. Um, and it just seemed to, like it lasted me, what was, what, I actually just finished, I poured a little glass earlier with my dinner, which I really didn't even drink, but that was, for two, so that was a week. I mean, for me to have a bottle of wine for a week, it was a magic bottle. I swear to God, it must have just like reproduced while it was in the bottle. It was a magic bottle. <laughs> like the magic carpet ride. Um, yes, sleep is key. I, I'm, I'm reading some of um, your comments here. Um, and, you know, hi, all of you. I see everybody's um, on the check-in right now. Who do we got? Who do we got? Oh my, we got a lot. Gina, I love you. You you just, you brought everybody in. What a sweetheart. Hey Rob, Gina, Rich. Um, I would check to see if it's possible to bring in a guest. Yes, please, I, somebody has to help me do this because I it would be cool. I could bring in a virtual guest. So guess what? Somebody's got to help me because I'm a spaz and I'm, I'm the first to admit it. 
Angela, how are you? Roger, Gianna, uh, Diane, Michael, Elena. Hi, Elena. Uh, Michael, Sonia. Hello, Mama. Mel in the building. Hello, Tina, my love. Um, Chrissy, how are you? Thomas, how are you? Um, Amory, hi. Savion, all right, let's see. What did you say? Nothing wrong with what you're doing. You're just enjoying life. Social status, YOLO point, wait, YOLO point blank period. Um, again, I'm an old lady. I'm not sure what YOLO means. <laughs> um, but it's all good. Um, you only live once. Yeah, well, this much, we uh, to our understanding. Hello, Camille, how are you, doll? Yeah, to our understanding, we only live once, right? Um, but uh, I don't know. We, I mean, I think we, we, we live on and on, right? But uh, yeah, maybe only once. All right, so I got like a lot of things to talk about. I have so many notes that I have to figure out where I want to go with this. So I'm going to start like on a, I don't know if it's a, I've been on a very like spiritual journey these past two weeks. Um, so this topic definitely is, you know, has some punch to it. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I have these little bit deeper topics, I lose people a little bit. Um, but it's okay. Uh, it's real talk. So I'm going to get real right now. And if you don't want to deal, I'm, I'm good with that. I get it. But... Um, I want to talk today about how do you go on after loss? How do you go on after loss? Um, so loss is a lot of different things, right? Um, obviously loss is, um, someone passing away. Um, and loss is also divorce. So, um, you know, it, it's not all the same thing, uh, certainly, but loss is loss. So when someone passes away, um, you know, I mean, you have to accept that, right? Uh, whether you want to or not. And, you know, usually the the course of and the events of life are that, um, you know, we usually, we bury a parent, right? Or our parents. Um, so, um, I just got a comment, Gabriella, hey, speak for yourself. My divorce was a gain. Was a gain. <laughs> yeah, I am not divorced, um, so I cannot speak for myself. But I am just um, going off of, you know, certain, you know, what other people have said to me. Um, so, you know, again, going back to deaths in the family, you know, um, it's very difficult uh, to lose a parent, obviously, um, and indeed both parents. But I feel that, you know, our central nervous system is already prepared to lose a parent. I mean, we know that we are more than likely in our lifetime that we're going to bury one of our parents. I mean, not, not to sound, you know, like morbid or anything, but we are pretty much mentally prepared for that because they're older than us. So odds are that. And, you know, of course, on the flip side of that, you know, there are parents, sadly, that have buried their children. So, um, you know, and no one should ever have to do that. And of course, I, I live with that. So, you know, it's, it, and again, how do you go on with loss? So, you know, sometimes, you know, I think as adults, there are certain adults, I, I will say, that are probably more um, connected or attached to their parents than others are. Um, I've seen people that have lost a parent, and I mean, they post on Facebook about it all the time, um, you know, and it, it hurts. And especially if they're a huge part of your life, um, you know, I, I am, you know, can imagine that it hurts. I mean, unfortunately, 
you know, my mom is, you know, dying in front of me, a slow, painful death with uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, um, you know, uh, and, and it's a part of life that we know um, we're going to have to deal with. So one of the comments, lost my mom the day after Christmas back in 210, till this day not over it. Um, then the fact that she died in my arms doesn't make it any easier. So these are the things that, and I'm sorry, you know, for your loss. And, and these are the things that I want to talk about because it's painful, right? And so what do we do when we feel pain? We keep it moving, right? Because like Mel just said, how do you deal with loss? You have to be strong. That was number one. So yes, you do have to be strong, but you know, and then the number two was life goes on, you're not underground. So I agree with that. And most of us go into what I would call survival mode, um, what I do call survival mode, I should say. And it's not always the best place to be. And because if you're in survival mode, you're not actually dealing with your feelings. Um, and those things will manifest inside of you. So that's why I say like, you know, how do you go on? Like, where do you put that? You know, where do you put that? When you lose somebody, where do you put it? You know, when your heart is broken because you miss that person, where do you put that? So that goes on many levels. It's in death. And like I said, it's also, you know, with a marriage, if you are married, um, you get married supposedly for till death do us part, right? And all of a sudden, this person that you thought you were spending the rest of your life with, this person that you probably had children with, uh, you now hate each other, maybe, you know, or you, you, you uh, no longer want to be together. And now, not only do, is maybe your heart broken, um, because you're, um, you know, separating from this person, but you also now have to mourn the life that you thought you were going to have because no one goes into marriage thinking they're not going to stay in a marriage, right? I mean, that's not the goal. The goal is you get married and it's till death do you part. Um, and a lot of times we end up, you know, divorced. So now you got to get, o you got to get over, you got to deal, whatever the hell, you know, get over is a hard word, but you have to deal with the emotions that go with ending your marriage and the love that you had for this person once before. Um, but now you also have to mourn your own life as well because you signed up for something that you are no longer going to have. Now I understand if you are in a bad marriage, you're very excited and you know for in the next chapter, right? Because you you know you're like, "Okay, I'm free." You know, I have I was there, I'm not there anymore, and now I'm going to live my life and be happy. And I totally get that. But at some point in time, there's got to be when when you're at home, you know, like when you go to put your head down on the pillow at night, those things they come up. And, you know, they come into your psyche and your mind, body, and soul recognize the fact that you are not, you know, something is missing. So where do you put that? So I am, you know, I, I've been battling a lot with this um, and I've been talking a lot about it to people. And um, I'm just curious and I'm going to read in on some of the comments that are, are being come you know coming in on the thread don't think i i'm here guys and i i'm you know me i start talking I, I i go back on my feed though and i will see so mel said three it's easier when you have someone to take care of meaning children yes it, it definitely does um make you um what's the word it it it, it, it focuses you right um but i know from my from Again, I had a different, I'm having a different experience being a widow, but it also makes it difficult because you must be strong for your children. So 
when do you actually get in touch with those feelings of pain and hurt and all of those things? Because, you know, I was having a really bad day, actually on Valentine's Day, truth be told. I was having a really bad day and I looked at the time and it was 1130 and I could not get my act together even a little bit. I went to the gym. I worked out for like two and a half hours. I did everything I possibly could to pull myself out of that place. It wasn't happening. And uh, I had, you know, spoken to a healer and I guess she felt my energy. She had called me and I said to her, it's 1130. I have to go pick up my son at 230. How am I going to do this? I need to be okay by 230. Like, where do I put all of this? And she gave me a really great analogy that I want to share with you guys. Um, I did share it with um, a friend of mine the other day on the phone. She said to me, why not let the knife go all the way through instead of keeping the knife in and turning it? Because when you actually don't deal with the emotions or with the power that that situation has over you, you are just continually turning the knife in an open wound as opposed to Getting that, having that knife and allowing it to go right through you and cutting you and hurting you. But once the knife comes out, you can now heal that wound because it's no longer going to be an open wound because there's nothing in there to keep it open. So your heart and your soul can heal. So I found that to be very powerful and I wanted to share that with you guys, whether you, you know, that makes sense to you or not or it resonates with you it resonated with me because my feeling is as I'm reading some of your comments going back to survival mode we all go into survival mode and yes when you take care of you know your children uh, you know you have that distraction if you will um, you know or a focus you have to have a positive focus to put your energy someplace so that you can move forward Unfortunately, if you don't actually deal with what you've been, what you've gone through, if it's had that type of an impact on you, if it is that knife that is continually turning, then you're never dealing with it because you're constantly just focused on something else. So you can take care of your kids, but eventually your kids are going to grow up. So when they're no longer in the house with you and they've grown up, is it just that, okay, well, 20 years have gone by, so... You know, even though the knife is still in there and it's still turning, you know, you learned how to maneuver yourself, right? You know how to function with that knife in you. So it's all good, right? You can figure it out. I'm not sure about that. So this is the reason why I'm bringing this. Um, I decided to discuss this tonight. Um, this is one of the things I wanted to discuss. Um, Gabriella, Karen, you go numb after losing a child. I have lost a child and it's the worst feeling in the world. Gabriella, I have no words for you. I mean, I am... It, terribly uh, I am so st terribly sorry I, 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 I like I said I, I have no words there is nothing I could say and I know because I watch my mother-in-law um, you know we have other people that tune into the show that have lost children as well and um, there are no words the only thing I can do is send love and light and and my heart truly breaks um, and I don't think and and again I I, what do I know? Um, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on the radio. But I don't know that you can ever heal from something like that. So, you know, someone said, you know, this healer was saying to me, you know, like, I don't know. My heart is, my, you know, and it's, I didn't lose a child. I lost my spouse. But my heart is broken. I don't know that my heart will ever heal. Does it mean that my heart can't love again? 110%. I can, I can love. But... Will you ever come back from something like that? That's, you know, I mean, I just, do, like, I know we're resilient, but it's so much to, um, you're never going to be the same. And I guess that that's part of it, right? You accept the fact that you're never going to be the same, but, you know, there's so much of you that doesn't even want to go on, right? I, I can imagine. I, I mean, I don't know how you find the strength uh, to keep going, but you do, right? Somehow, some way, you do. And if you are, you know, have a, a children or you have people in your life, you know, you have to keep it going. You have to keep, you know, 
I mean, I think about myself too, like my father, you know, my mother's sick. And, you know, like I think about me and I, like my father, the last thing my father needs to do is worry about me. You know, he's got enough to worry about. So I try to keep my stuff together so that my father doesn't have to worry about me. You know, I mean, it, it, there's always somebody that is going to count on you and rely on you and love you. And maybe that'll give you the, the strength to push that much more. And then eventually you will love yourself enough at that point to just keep going with that, I guess. And again, I'm just talking out loud right now. I've been doing a lot of soul searching. I've been really trying to understand all of this as, as you know, and I'm just talking about loss. I certainly can't counsel anyone losing a child. I've, I watch my mother-in-law. She's a shell of a, a person. I see my brother-in-law who lost his, his brother. He's a shell of a person. Like no one is the same. And how can you be? So I don't, I, 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 it, that's what I'm saying is that that's why I really want to talk about this is that, you know, how do you move forward? And then how do you move forward without harboring resentment for the situation? Whether it be the loss of your loved one, whether it be the demise of your marriage or relationship. How do you do that without hating on it? You know, I mean, cause like, you know, right away, the first thing you're going to, you're going to do, especially in a relationship is, you know what? F that, like, psh, I don't need that shit. I don't need that. I don't need to be around that. I'm better off by myself. And we get into that, right? Cause we don't need nobody. Cause we can do this. And then you get that whole anger thing going and you know, you're good but you're not because if you're angry, you're never going to be good because the anger got to go someplace, right? So resentment and anger are in that subconscious of yours. So you can push it wherever you want to, but that subconscious is very loud. And I was just enlightened about this, like I said, this past week. All right. So anyway, you are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy. We are live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. We are also live on uh, my Facebook group. Uh, Real Talk with Karen Stacy. I am doing another interactive show, and right now we are talking about death and dealing with death of a family member, of a loved one, of a spouse, of a marriage. Um, so this is where we are. So um, another comment, our time will come, so live in the moment because yesterday is gone and tomorrow isn't promised. Agreed, and, uh, and I, I try my best to live that way, but sometimes it's not easy to, because it, it's inorganic. You know, you do it, you go through the notions, but you may or may not actually be living it. If you, you know, and, and that's just my own personal uh, experience. Hey, Gina, how are you, Bill? Good to see you. Gabriella, thank you. I'm glad you felt that way. Uh, Dawn Marie, how are you? Emma, how are you? Raymond, how are you? Um, okay, Savian, I've never been married, but I was assumed divorce, although hard to deal with, are more bearable than losing a loved one. Well, the thing about divorce is it's a choice. Um, you know, when you choose, you choose to get married, and then you choose to end the marriage. So, yes, um... It's definitely uh, a different animal because a death is not something that you choose. Um, it happens. And whether someone was sick or whether it, um, you know, it, it happens, um, you know, uh, tragically and out of the blue, um, death is not uh, an option, right? It, and when it's your time, it's your time. So certainly... Um, the uh certainly that that would be the case ah and i was just corrected thank you donna it's called allowing the sword to pass through and so yes that was and i, I told you i'm not i didn't i'm still learning myself so i did not word it correctly so i appreciate the correction um so it's allowing the sword to go through allowing sword to pass through so I guess if you put that into your head and you kind of have that analogy that it's just, you're, it's going through, you, you, you know, you got to let it happen, right? So you hopefully will, will heal up from that point forward. Cecilia, nice to see you. Thea, how are you? Cuz, uh, Mike, how are you? 
Gabriella, I, I did the, please don't thank me. I, I wish I could have said something that was, I, I don't know. I, I feel uh, there's nothing. I, I look, I'm speechless. Go figure, right? I'm, I'm, I, I'm never speechless. I just send you much love and I give you, I take my hat off to you because, um, no one should have to go through that. So I, I send my love to you. Okay, uh, Sonia, honestly, I think it just depends on the situation. Imagine if you're if you divorce the love of your life and now that person is building a new life with someone else. Yeah, see, that would drive me. I would probably have to kill somebody if that happened. <laughs> that could be unbearable to some people because that person chose to leave and be happy with someone else. And yeah, you know what? That is life, right? That is life. You think about... Think about it, right? You could be dating, like my husband, he dated a, like a gazelle, wherever we went, he banged somebody there. I mean, he was all over the place. He had girlfriends, cheated on him left and right, the whole thing. And, you know, why was it that him and I, like, you know, he, that we, you know, we ended up together, you know? And so, there is certain people are just meant to be together and certain people just aren't. So, you know, there could have all the girls that my husband was with before me could have felt exactly the same way. You know, oh, he's with this bitch. But what the hell, man? I did this for him. I did that for him. And why is he with her and not with me? And so a lot of us say that, right? Because it's like, wait a minute. When we were together, I did everything for this person. I did this, I did that, we did this. But they never wanted to give me that. They never wanted to, oh, I like to go out dancing. He didn't want to go out dancing. All of a sudden, now he's going out dancing? And you want to go to wherever they are and freaking trip them. Like, are you kidding me right now? Now you're going out dancing. I'm with you for 20 years. You don't freaking dance with me. And now you meet this freaking bimbo and you're going out dancing with her? Are you freaking kidding me? But it's true, you know, unfortunately, that's what energy and, and that connection is all about, right? I mean, is that people connect with certain people in a certain way and you can't force a connection like that. It either happens or it doesn't. And you could do everything in the world for this person and this other person could do absolutely nothing for this person and they're the ones that are reaping the benefits and you're the one who taught them the lesson. So yeah, that's a very good point, um, Sonia. I, I had to go off on, in the middle of it. I didn't even finish reading it. Um, perhaps in that circumstance, it would be easier if the person died because rejection might be even more painful. You never know. Yeah, um, I, you know, you uh, that part you kind of got me on, Sonia, because I, I don't think it's, you know, somebody dying just is never a good option. So I, I, I don't know that I can concur with that, but I, I, I see what you're saying. It's, it, it's a great pain. Um, and when someone dies, it's a final, it's a finality that, you know, it, it, it is what it is and, you know, it, it will, it is put to rest. So I'm assuming that's what you meant by that. Um, Gabriella, no, you can never heal for a loss. You can only move forward. Right. Um, when you're down and get those feelings, just light a white candle and pray for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, that that certainly does help. And, um, you know, I've been trying to, you know, the, to recite mantras and to have a positive attitude and to change those thoughts and pray for them. Pray for yourself. Um, you know, whether you worship a rock or, you know, Jesus or the Messiah, whatever, you know, it, it, you know. You gotta, you gotta believe in something. So even if you believe in, like I said, the, the rock in the corner, believe in the rock in the corner, it, it will bring whatever it needs to bring for you. Um, Mike, I don't feel you will ever be the same, but you will learn to love again, um, in a different way. I definitely believe that. And I don't necessarily know it's a different way. Um, maybe it's even in a better way, right? Because I think when you lose somebody, you understand just how precious life is. So if you have the opportunity and the blessings to have love like that again, you will cherish it and you will live. Like right now, like even, you know, that's the beautiful thing about children. 
they see everything from such a different perspective. You know, my son stopped me a couple of weeks ago. He's like, mommy, look at how beautiful the sun is. It's just such a beautiful sun sunrise. And I was like, wow. And just the fact that, I mean, cause me, I don't think anything's beautiful at seven o'clock in the morning. And he stopped me and made me realize. And I was like, and I looked at it and I said, you know what, Noah, that is a beautiful sunrise. And when you're in pain, it's very difficult to admire a beautiful sunrise because your pain is putting you in a place in which you cannot enjoy and you cannot relive, um, you know, and, and everything else. So um, it's definitely um, a, uh, it's, it's definitely an, a difficult thing. Are you guys still with me? Because I just got a message if I went off and I am not off. I am still on according to what I'm seeing. Um, but it, sometimes, you know, these feeds, they get wacky. So I still see I'm, I'm on there. So I think I'm good. All right, Chrissy, it's hard. The empty nest syndrome. I know I'm blessed to have two amazing, success, successful grown children. And it's still hard when I miss the times they were little. They are my purpose always, no matter what I have going on. Well, and that's what our children are to us, right? They're always, um, they're our reason. But the, 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 the thing, that, well, not to scare, you know, the thing is, is that if we put ourselves only into our children, when, like you just said, you know, you're an empty nester, um, if you are, put everything into your children, then when your children are no longer there, is that when you put into you? And at that point, is it too late? Because you've already um, allowed so much time to go that way. You know what I mean? So it, it always needs to be about our children 110%. But they grow up and they are going to have their own lives. And at the end of the day, you only have one life to live. And you got to live it um, to the best of your ability and to the fullest. So if you wait 20 years to heal from whatever it is because you invested all of your time and energy into your children, of course, it was a great investment to invest in your children. Don't get me wrong. But you have to invest in yourself as well because, you know, it's like I told you guys and I say it all the time. I do the analogy of um, the plane. And I always say... You know, when the, uh, they say in case of an emergency, the mask will come down, make sure you put it on yourself before helping others. And most people um, would help someone else before they help themselves, right? Because, you know, especially your child, you know, if, if you think your child can't breathe, you'll give them whatever air you have in you so that they can breathe, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard, so I always tell myself that you have to put the mask on yourself first before you can help, um, anyone else. And that is definitely, um, you know, the moral of the story because you can't help anyone if you can't help yourself. So taking care of you is definitely the most important thing you can do. And then, you know, beyond that, then you can take care of your children. So that's just my own personal belief. Um, so Donna, it helps when we believe they aren't dead, but instead they are here in another form. We can't have them in body, but we never lose them in spirit. Yes, of course. Um, and, and, you know, our, our souls truly know that we, we know that, but you know, selfishly, um, the, the here and now we, we want to feel them, touch them and see them. So yes, we are aware that, um, they are still, well, some of us are aware, some of us aren't, but you know, if you are in tune and if you pay attention to the signs, because they are usually there, you pay attention to the signs, you pay attention to these things, you know, they are with you. Um, it's just very hard sometimes because you want them here with you. Um, so selfishly, right? Gabrielle resentment is ugly. 
Yes, it is, Gabriella, but sometimes when you don't even realize that you're resentful of the situation because it's resentment towards a situation. It's not resentment towards anything other than that, right? I mean, maybe you resent your, your ex. I mean, I, I can't speak for that. But in terms of, um, you know, the... You know, especially when, when you lose someone, when things happen, you know, you do. You become very resentful because you didn't ask to be in that situation, right? So now you're being put in a situation you didn't want to be in. So you're always going to have some type of resentment. So, you, you know, you, well, not always, but maybe. So you want to have some place to put that because that just builds up into anger, which is definitely not healthy, right? Louis Natrella in the building. Wepa, Richie is here. Um, Sonia Marie, you are right about it depends on the situation because it's not in my nature to wish anyone death. No kind of I will if uh, will if they were to hurt me and abandon me for someone else. Yes, I'll be devastated and hurt, but no. Um, Losing a loved one unexpectedly is a whole other level that can't be matched. Yes, because it's, again, it's shock, you know, and, and shock is a very difficult thing, um, you know, to process because um, there is <laughs> there is no um, uh, cushion for shock. It's like, bam, there it is. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Sorry. I know the typos are hard, Savion, because I'm actually reading this live. So it's, it's hard for me as I'm reading aloud, um, to, uh, to, to put the words together with that. But I, I, I think I got it. Um, yes, yeah, Slick. I, I know where you've been. <laughs> Rob, we're on here live. I couldn't figure out how to add anybody, but at least I figured out how to do this. Um, Hi, Rochelle. How are you? Joey, what's going on? Hey, Michael. How are you? Um, okay. S Sonia. Karen, uh, what I meant by the last part of the comment is that people deal with rejection and death differently. So one person may feel rejection is more painful than death and vice versa for another person. The comment I was responding to imply that death is always worse than loss by divorce. And my only point is that everyone deals with things differently. Yeah, I mean, of course, that is absolutely um, true. Uh, Mel, did you ever consider speaking to someone who can communicate with the other side? Sometimes it helps to hear them tell you how proud they are, how much they love you, and they want you to move on. Um, you know what, what, Mel? That is um, definitely, I believe in that 100%. And um, I've gone to see people, and uh, they're like, who the hell is this? And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, there's this guy. He don't stop talking. Like, he's all over the place. He don't stop talking. He, why, he got to tell you this. He got to tell you that. So, yes, my, my husband's spirit is definitely very strong. And I have been told, you know, all of those things. And I didn't even need to be told them. I know them. But knowing them, accepting them, and, you know, living with them are all a very different um you know, scenario, right? And and I, I realize that. And I'm realizing it more and more as time goes on. And as, you know, pe situations happen, and, you know, and people kind of say things to you. And a lot of people don't want to say certain things to you because they feel like, you know, it's, it's messed up. Like, I, I can't tell this girl this. But you know what? Sometimes you got to hear stuff. And maybe you don't like it. But it has to resonate someplace because the only way to heal and move forward is to deal. You got a deal to heal. Oh, look, I'm making like a funny right now. See, I see that. Um, Christine, see, now here on here, you can bring people onto the camera. On the on the iPad, you can't do it. I mean, not the iPad, the, the laptop. So, see, I knew I wasn't crazy. Um, hello, Christine, how are you? Uh, Gabriella, so what do you do when your exam... It resents you because you got the balls to leave. Oh, when your ex has the, resents you because you had the balls to leave him. Well, if your ex resents you, it's not your problem. It's his. So um, <laughs> the only time resentment is an issue is if you're the one that's harboring the resentment. If he's harboring the resentment, screw him. 
Let him deal with his own demons, right? It's not your fault. Um, hi, John. How are you? Joanne, how are you? Um, hello, Christine. Hi, Carl. How are you? Um, yeah, voice command. I know. See, nothing listens to us, right, Gabriella? Um, Savvy, I'm not uh, saying you're wishing death on anyone. I'm saying that everyone's interpretation of loss is different. Yeah, don't, guys, please don't worry about the typos. Um, you just have to understand that when I'm reading them aloud, if I trip a little bit while I speak, um, you know, it's just because I'm trying to read them. So, uh, you know, bear with me um, on the comments because sometimes that does, um, it, it does throw a little bit of a monkey wrench when I'm reading. Since I'm like, you know, the, the whole glasses thing, I got to take them on, I got to put them off, I got to do whatever so I can read. So, um, so um, you know, my next question to this is really, you know, where do you put that pain? Um, you know, do you feel, do people actually deal with the pain or do we just push it down and away um, so that we can go into survival mode and just keep functioning, right? Because I learned, you know, from personal experience that um, I call it the three day grace period. You know, and, and that's really what happens um, is, you know, you get like three days and then you got to be good. So, um, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, uh, Mrs. So-and-so that, you know, your husband passed away, but your mortgage payment is due in three days. Uh, when will you be making that payment? And you don't even know what your last name is at that point. But this is how life goes, right? So there, I always said no time to cry. That was what I was going to name my salon, but I thought it was a very bad thing to name your salon. No time to cry means like somebody effed up your hair. So it wasn't the right thing, but that was always my logo in life. No time to cry. And that's true. There really isn't time to cry because you got to keep it moving. But the sad thing is, is that there should be time to cry because if you don't cry, if you don't let these things out and you don't deal with it, then where does it go? So my question is, you know, do people do that inner work to make, to, you know, to, to, to help themselves? And if it has to do with divorce, do people do that inner work so that the same thing doesn't happen twice? So that if you do go into another relationship, are you going to bring with you all of the things that were in your other relationship? Now, let's call a spade a spade. It takes two in a relationship. So as much as you could be, unless you're Mother Teresa or, you know, whatever, there's always two sides to every story. So for every woman that's complaining about her husband is every man that's complaining about his wife. So, you know, there's always two sides to every story. Some people just suck and you could be great and that person could just be a piece of shit. It happens. I'm not saying it doesn't. But you have to also make peace with these things because if you did not have a successful relationship, you need to learn why that relationship wasn't successful. And we all have to take part and we all have to take accountability for our own actions, right? So, you know, it, 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 there was a reason why the relationship didn't work. And, you know, of course there were a hundred reasons. They could have been cheating, they could have, you know, and everything could have been great and the person just can't keep the thing in their pants and they gotta go do it. I mean, there were a hundred reasons why. But the truth of the matter is, is that now, if you want to start dating again and be happy again, have you made changes? Have you taken steps so that your next relationship will be a healthier relationship? Do we see the red flags quickly now? Like, you know, that you said, you know what? This guy's lying to me or this girl's lying to me. Oh, this one's playing me. Like, do you see it right away now? Like you see that sign and do we listen to it? Because a lot of times we see red flags and we shoo them away because we want to believe that, you know what, let me give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I'm, I'm jumping to a conclusion, whatever, everybody, because we want it to not be what we already know it is, right? And that's the truth. And that's what we do. 
So we try to overlook certain things. But at 40, 50, 60 years old, you can't overlook these things because these red flags are red flags. And if a red flag is there, you have to acknowledge it. And I think on both sides. So, you know, I, I'd like some, some input from, you know, you guys out there with, um, you know, do you do inner work? What do you do so that your next relationship is going to be different? And, you know, when should you start dating again? Like, you know, I know like a lot of men, and again, I'm not male bashing by any means. I know a lot of men, you know, they go out and, you know, they want to be physical right away. Um, you know, they always say the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else, right? So I know that a lot of people do that. And I think that there is a big disconnect in the dating world at this point, right? We've talked about this. We've talked about friends with benefits. We've talked about people, you know, having sex and not kissing. Um, you know, I mean, we talked about so many things, right? Um, where people don't want a committed relationship, um, you know, so is that because of a bad marriage? Is that because you don't want to get hurt again? Is that just because you don't want to be in another relationship? Um, you know, these are all like pertinent questions that I would like to know your thoughts on. Um, okay. Savvy Mother Teresa. Let, um, there's no Mother Teresa over here. Um, hi Janine. How are you? Um, okay, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, guys, I am trying to read the feed, so let's keep it to the show, right? Um, okay, you did, okay, Karen, okay, here we got a, a long, a long one here. Mel, you did what you had to do as a mother and wife. It's sad, but life has to go on until you do meet again. You mourned. I'm sorry, you mourned your husband, but it's been years and you, my love, have to move on with your own life and you have to come to peace with what it is or you're never going to move forward in a new relationship or life. Time to change the subject. It's very depressing. Um, okay, I got counseling foreclosure. I closed the chapter of divorce. He left with another woman thinking the grass was greener on the other side. He lied about everything, saying I was crazy and there wasn't anyone else. He got caught walking with the other woman, broke the marriage. We had a nine and a half years. It was hard. Yeah, I mean, and and I'm sorry, you know, to hear that. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's that's what I'm saying. It's very difficult to, um, you know, to move forward after somebody hurts you like that and to trust. That's the thing. We talked about this last week. We talked about how many people are truthful. And people were like, I said, how many people tell the truth? And like the thing was going crazy. The feed was going nuts. Everybody was like, no one is that the other. And that's up because you know why at 40 50 60 years old do we lie why what is the purpose of it we what is the purpose of lying you're perpetrating the fraud so why do you gotta lie just tell the truth you know i mean so like now it's like so i say you know like if you're gonna start dating when do you start dating again that that was the question i had asked um, and yes, you know, we always know the grass is never greener. Um, normally if you're in a relationship and it was a bad relationship, when you get out of the relationship, you're like all over the place and you don't want to know nothing from nobody. You just want to do your thing and not be bothered. And I'm going to screw you before you screw me because there's the resentment again and all of those things that take place. Um, it took me over a year to date and figure out my life in a romantic department. And God bless you, because a year is really not that long of a period of time. Um, but, you know, you got back into the swing of things. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I think the, 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 the trick is, or not the trick, but one of the things that needs to be done is you need to give yourself time to heal. Um, because we all know about rebound relationships, right, and how well those never work. 
Um, and yes, I mean, when you're ready, Gabriella, but you know, do we really know if we're ready? I mean, you know, you try it and then after you do it, you're like, eh, I guess I wasn't ready, you know, but you got to at least give it a shot. Right. And you got to see, and sometimes you got to go through the notions and fake it till you make it right. So, um, you know, and then at that point, my question too would be, what are you looking for in a partner at that point? What are you looking for in a partner? What do you want from them? Do you need to have um, a connection? Do you need to have like a, a, a soul to soul connection? Do you need to have um, a, 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 um, you know, a, a, an intellectual uh, connection? Do you need to have an emotional connection? Or just do you need to just have a physical connection? You know, I mean, what's important at that point? Um, you know, and, and that's, the, that's the question at that point, you know, what is important at that point? What are you looking for? If somebody said to you, what are you looking for? What's going to be your answer? What are you looking for? You want love? You want a friend? You want I'm not supposed to curse an F buddy. Um, what do you want? What is it that you're looking for when you're out there again? And yes, I see, um, you know, uh, one of the comments, you, you won't know until you find that person. And I do agree with that. Um, you know, our, I think I believe a lot in soul to soul connections and I think that your soul recognizes the soul that you're supposed to be with. And when you meet someone, there's just that comfortability. And that's with men, women, relationships, female, female, male, male. You know, when you meet somebody, that's what that connection means, right? Is that you have a connection to that person. For some reason, you connect to that person. And yes, Gabriella, I agree with I want it all. Um, when I had my profile on, uh, you know, when I was on a dating, the dating things, I said, I want the sun, the moon, and the stars. And when they would, you know, message me and say, what is it that you're looking for? My response was everything. And yeah, that's what, I mean, that's what we want. But the truth of the matter is, is that we also have to be able to provide everything for ourselves, right? And these people are just in a good addition to um, the mix. So, um, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, so you're saying, okay, you want it all. You want the connection. You want, you know, all of those things. You know, I, I'm just curious because so many people, and, and I would like some more people to chime in on this, you know, what is it that people are looking for? If you're out there and you're dating, what do you want? What do you want? You just want to date? You just want to bang? You just want to be a friend. You just want somebody to go out to dinner with. You just want somebody to talk on the phone. What do you want? Someone that will complete you. Yeah, and, and you know, again, it's a, that's a scary sentence, right? Somebody that will complete you because you have to complete yourself. It's going to be someone that's going to make you more complete, maybe. I don't know. It's probably a different verbiage that probably should be utilized in that. But, you know, um, I totally get um, what you mean by that. And I just want to thank you guys for tuning in to Real Talk with Karen Stacy. We are live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. Um, and we are live on Facebook. And uh, I know this feed seems to be a little quiet today. Um, if you guys could do me a huge favor, since we are deep into convo here, um, maybe you can share this live video um, and invite people in so that we can get more opinions and more people to uh, join the fun. Um, I'm not sure how the hell you do it. Um, if you have to, there's like a host live hosting party or something. As we all know, Karen is not very tech savvy, so I'm not sure exactly how to do it. But if you guys will share the video, um, maybe we can get some more people in on the feed and get some more feedback because I love feedback and I love hearing what you guys are saying. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, 
Okay, let's see. Gabrielle Lull. There were times I want... Where am I? There were times I just want to bang. There were times I want to friend. There were times I want to talk on the phone. There are times I want to be wined and dined and I want to give it all back. You know what? And and that goes right back, Gabriella, to what you said. I want it all. And um, I, I agree. Uh, do you want that all from the same person or do you find that you need multiple people to accomplish all four of the things that you just mentioned? Um, okay. Uh, I look for loyalty and truthfulness. I have a domestic partner now. Took 10 years to meet him. He's awesome. There's always ups and downs. Yes, of course. Anything in life is going to have ups and downs, a thousand percent. Um, and we need to know that and be aware of that. Um, but, um, you know, and that's just part. Listen, you know, sometimes you go through these parts where, um, you know, you get along great and you're really connected. And then you have those times where it's like, remember that comedian? What is that, that, that breathing, that in and out and in and out? Like, and it's true. If you've been with somebody, sometimes it's like they're breathing and you're like, really, do you have to breathe that loud? You know, and like other times it's like you want to breathe the air out of their mouth. So it's a very funny um, thing being in a relationship, uh, especially one that stands the test of time. Uh, Raymond, someone that understands me and I understand that I can have a long conversation with. Um, Gabriella just won that one special person. Right. But what I, but Gabriella, I think sometimes we need like four people to equate to that one person, right? Um, when you can't find all of those things in that one person. Because let's face it, you know, everybody's good for something. <laughs> I hate to say that, but everybody's good for something. So now we've established what we're looking for um, with some people here. We've established what we're looking for. So now the question that, you know, that, that I'm going to go there is because I always have to go there. Um, yeah, I don't know, Gabrielle, maybe Mel left. I don't know. Everybody got a little quiet now. I don't know. She said I was getting depressing because we were talking about, you know, like loss and stuff. So I tried to lighten it up a little bit. Let's call them back out. <laughs> Come on, everybody. I promise I won't talk about death anymore. Uh, I'm over it. I'm, I mean, I'm not over it, but I'm, I'm over the death part. So now I'm going into sex because <laughs> it's real talk. So here we go. You ready for the real talk? I want to know. So, you know, we're talking about dating. We're talking about, you know, people connecting and making connections. So... If you are dating somebody or you're just starting to whatever, how soon should you start having sex? I mean, we're all adults. So, you know, is that good girl, bad boy Sigma still like alive? Or are we adults and when it comes to sex, they are no longer a double standard? Um, you know, I mean, because... When we were kids, I mean, I grew up, you know, in a very Italian neighborhood. Oh, you got to make them have blue balls. You got to be a good girl. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever the hell that means. And, um, and you know, you, you weren't actually true to yourself because maybe you wanted to jump this person, but you didn't because it wasn't right. And good girls don't do that. So a guy isn't going to respect you if you have sex, you know, too quickly because that's not the way it's supposed to be. And I'm doing quotations for those of you listening on the radio. I'm doing air quotations. So my question is, you know, how soon should you have sex if you start dating somebody? Um, or I don't know, maybe your friends and one thing led to another. I don't really know. Um, but you know, is, is this, how does this work in the, you know, like I said, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, like it's, there's good girls and then there's bad girls <clears throat> and why can't we all just be, you know, bad girls in a good girl's body or something? I don't know. I mean, I think that we're adults and I think that as adults, we have the right to make our own decisions. 
And I think that if you have a connection to somebody, that you should have a connection to somebody. And if you want to be with them and that and it's an overwhelming thing then you do it and you shouldn't be judged for it but it should also be a mutual thing you know it's not like if somebody's like trying to get in your pants and they're insinuating that this is going to go further when all they really wanted to do was sleep with you then that's perpetrating the fraud and that's a little bit different but if both parties involved are getting ready and they're good and they want to get down, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and they are not the opinions of MiamiMikeRadio.com. Okay, um, where am I now? Um, okay. Okay, where am I? Sorry, people are chiming in and it doesn't have to do with the show. Hey, Jim, how are you? Chrissy, you said exactly. I'm not sure which thing, but okay, thank you. Uh, Mel, at our age, it doesn't matter. No such thing as being a good girl. Good girls go to heaven. Bad girls go everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like under the table. <laughs> oh, my. Did I just say that out loud? Um, all right. Uh, Ray, when you are comfortable with each other, what's the rush? When to time? When the time is right, it will happen. Gabriella, good girls, go to Mel's house. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, are we saying that, like, is, I want to know if the stigma is still there, and I'm not getting responses from that. So I had two ladies that, um, you know, said basically do what you got to do. Um, and... Um, I haven't heard any men chime in on this, so I'm curious to know because you women are, I mean, men are usually quicker to jump into the bedroom than women because women, we all know, it, we have to have some type of an emotion, they say, and men don't really go with emotion, they go with the physical, right? So, um, you know, I'm curious, you know, we got off of this other subject, so I want to know, um, you know, you know what people think, and you know, I think that I think we would be, you know, you have to talk about the pink elephant in the room, right? Because we are all adults. So sex has a huge part in a relationship. So. Um, you gotta, there's gotta be, I think all of us now, as we got older, and I it could be wrong, and you guys shout me out on this. I think as we've gotten older, that you have to have some type of a connection to be physical with somebody. Um, we need more than that. You know, you need to be stimulated mentally as well as physically. You know, at, at 40, 50, 60 years old, um, I think that, you know, seeing a hottie and wanting to, you know, get down with them is all good, but, um, I think it, you need more. Cause if you go, when we were younger, if you, I used to joke around like the hot guys that would take their shirts off in the clubs and everything. Don't talk, just look good. Don't talk. You're a toy for me to play with. I'm good. But now it's like, that's all you got. Where am I going with that? Like now, you, you know, foreplay is having a deep conversation. You know, foreplay is showing someone, like seeing somebody's intellect, seeing their depth, you know, seeing who and what they are. That's a turn on. Um, you know, somebody, you know, sticking their tongue down your throat. I mean, if they do it good, great. But, you know, it's a different type of thing, right? So we need a little bit more, I think, as we get older, right? You need a little bit more. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and I'm waiting to, to hear, um, you know, what you guys have to say about this. Um, I see here emotions come into play. If you don't feel that, then there's no point. Um, I, okay, um... Let's see, uh, need more for sure. What appearances, um, okay, guys, you're having a conversation on this feed that has nothing to do with the show right now and um, it's confusing me because I'm trying to respond to everybody. Um, 
Okay. Uh, sex is not everything. There has to be mental stimulation. Amen. You can't, you can't, amen. Can't you just nailed it on the, maybe nailed it on the head. Um, you know, yes, yeah, sex isn't everything, but you know what? It really depends on the human. Um, let's face it. Part of being, especially as a woman, Okay, and I've had other women on the show and we have talked about this. Part of being, and, and this is why, you know, I have these younger guys on the feed and everything else. The reason why younger men want to be with older women is because they, because older women are confident. They own their themselves. They own their skin. And they know what they like and they know what they don't like and they know what they want and they know what they don't want. So that speaks volume. So at that point, what we want is a certain, and, and I'm sh men as well, I, I would imagine, um, you know, we want a certain type of lover. And, you know, if, if you're a girl, a woman, you know, or anybody, if you have a sexual preference that you like being choked or you like choking somebody, let's just say. I'm using this as an example. You can't be with somebody that don't like that because then they're not going to do it to you or you're not going to be able to do it to them. So I do think those things are important. And is it like a, a deal breaker? No, I don't think it's a deal breaker because if you really have a connection, but what sucks is let's call a spade a spade. If you have a connection with someone and you have that mental connection with them, but on the physical end, you're not getting what you need, then there becomes a disconnect in the relationship. You know, and then that's the hard part about life, right? Is that normally, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times your best sexual partner is probably not the person that would be your best life partner. It's very few and far between that you're able to get a life partner and uh, an F buddy that you see the sun, the moon, and the stars with. So that's, the, that's why I do think sex is important. Because it brings everybody, you know, on the same page. So if most of the times the person that you have that insane chemistry with where it's like, okay, we don't need to talk. I'm just going to rip off your clothes. Those people you don't really want to talk to. So that kind of sucks. Um, and, and yes, we need to have more. But my point is, is that if you have sexual preferences and you're, I mean, unless you're open. So let's just say this way. If you have sexual preferences and maybe you've, and again, I'm going with the choking thing. Don't ask me why it was just there. So maybe you've never been choked before. So maybe you don't know if you like it. And if you trust the person enough, then you let them do it. If that's something they enjoy doing. And then if you don't like it, then they don't do it again. Or if you do like it, it's part of your repertoire. You know, on the flip side of that, if you've never choked somebody before because you don't feel comfortable doing it, but the person that you're with enjoys being choked, then you got to be open to trying it and, you know, doing it and seeing, right? Because that's all part of, you know, being with somebody and making them happy, right? So, you know, I'm just bringing something up. All right, the, the feed is going cuckoo right now. So let's just see where we're at. Um... Okay, so I okay okay. I'm I know Gabriella. I'm sorry. I'm try. I was trying to get it. I, I it's very difficult. <laughs> I know this damn voice uh, talking um, is just not good. Um, we know what we want. Um, boom, got it, Karen. Okay. Um, hello, Mitch. How are you? Um, Okay, yeah, but nowadays you got chicks in their 40s still looking like they're in their 20s, so now I'm going to have to step up my game. Well, you should always step up your game. People should never be comfortable where they are. Um, yes, trust is everything. Uh, mental, physical, and emotion and humor all come into play. Otherwise, no point. Hello, Dora Jean, my love. How are you? 
<laughs> Mel, don't trust me. I wouldn't. <laughs> That's great. Well, you know what? It, it, it is what it is. And the, you are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy. We are live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And yeah, trust is a huge issue, right? Um, let's see where I have gone from. Okay, so I think I'm 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 done with this. I mean, we we've we've discussed these things. I, I don't know. We're we're, we're kind of at a at a standstill. So I think I'm I'm done with it. Um, so. Where, I want to see where, good thing I got my headphones on, Leslie. I'm sorry. See, I always do that, right? <laughs> All right. So what about, since we're talking about dating or whatever, all right, let me go on to a different thing. I was talking earlier and I was saying everybody thought I was some type of party animal, which I'm really not, you know, I'm really more of a homebody. Um, so what about going out? Like, you know, for those of us that are that are participating in the conversation right now, again, you know, most people on the feed are, are usually, you know, my demographics are usually, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And so, so do you still want to go out and party? Like, is this what, like the weekends, what do you look forward to doing? You want to go out dancing? You want to hear live music? You just want to go for dinner. You want to go out early. You want to go out late. You want to stay out late. You want to go out on a date. You want to drink. What do you want to do? Like, what's fun? You know, like people say, what's good? What's good? You know, what is the, um, what, 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 what do people want to do? Like, do you want to go out? Are, are we too old to go out? Is, is being 50, being 60 years old, should you just, be home like do you have no business going out or is it all okay and you can go out and have a good time and um you know i mean i think about when when we were younger and you know if you see saw people out and they were older you would be like all right what the hell are they doing out now but at the same token i also feel like that's um it's different now because everybody is older, but they're like a younger version of older, right? Does that make sense? So my laptop is about to um, lose its battery, so I have to plug it in. So I am walking away from the feed at the moment so that I can plug in so that we don't lose the feed because that would really stink. Um, almost there. So you are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy. We are live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. Can I reach here? Come on, let's go. Work with me. We're plugging in. I've been on long, and I guess because I'm using my laptop for um, the Facebook Live, uh, I am draining my battery. Go figure. So... Thank you guys for tuning in. We are doing a live interactive show. Um, I was just asking what people like to do, uh, how old is too old or not old enough, you know, to go out dancing or whatever it is that everybody likes to do. So I would like your feedback. And I see my, my I'm blowing up here, so let's see. Okay. Uh, from the looks and things, I just, my 50, you know, okay, so I have a question. It's about sexual assault next show. Oh God, Lord. Okay. All right, Gabriella, you know what? Um, message me, um, and let's talk about that. Um, okay. I'd rather go out with my guy if I had one. Okay. I think there should be, uh, Richie, I think there should be mixed. All right, Richie, you found me again. I'm sorry. I couldn't respond earlier. I think there should be a mix and going out is necessary to just unwind. Always good to try different things. Chrissy, yes, totally. i assuming you mean to go out. Rosalie, I want all of the above. Turning 50 in April and after burying my children's father, life is too short. Live each day to your last. 
Yeah, Rosie, um, I started the show off actually talking about that and um, everybody got a little depressed, so we we segued away from it. But please, um, you know, when the show is over, uh, I will, obviously, I, I post, you know, the, the live video and I also post um, the mix cloud and everything, you know, if you want to listen to it in the car. So please do listen to it. Um, and yeah, April, you're my an Aries, just like me. Um, crazy, right? How does that happen? So, um, you know, and, and it's funny because I am surrounded by all of these amazing people. And, um, you know, yeah, like, let's go have fun. But the problem is, is that fun means something different, right? Because sometimes I feel like I'm, I, I would say to my girlfriend, you know, like, I feel like I'm chasing the night. Like, you're, you're, you're going out because you want to find a, 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 the place to be. And sometimes there just isn't the place to be, right? Um, okay. All right. Guys, play nice on the feed, please. Leslie, you'd rather go out with us girls. You'll have a better time, drama-free. Mel, you know what? Women, going out with women is rarely drama-free, but when you find the right group of women, it absolutely is. Um, okay, I like going out, but not the bars or clubs. The casino is always fun. Yeah, and, and that's true too. That's another form of going out, right? Um, and then, but you were never a clubs and bar type of person. Okay, a lot, I go out for drinks from time to time. Um, okay. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like I, like me personally, if somebody said to me, like, what is your, like, what, what do you like to do? I like live music. I like to be, um, by the water. So if I can do something outside, like by the water and tequila or wine, well, tequila, tequila is involved, tequila, raw oysters, um, and live music, I am a happy camper and the sunshine and, and, you know, as little clothing as possible. That to me is Nirvana. Um, I actually, uh, our beach club, we would have, um, DJs on Friday nights and I, that was my favorite thing to do was to still be in my bathing suit and to have drinks and, you know, my son is playing with his friends and at the time my husband was alive and it was just so much fun because that is my happy place. Being on the water, by the water, which God knows why I live in New York, right? But, um, you know, to me that is the best night. I mean, if I can listen to music and dance in my bathing suit with no shoes on, I'm good. It don't take much. So that's my happy place, but there's not really a lot of happy places like that, especially not in New York, but in the summertime, you'll know where I'll be, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like going out dancing. Um, when I go out, sometimes I'm in my own world. And, and like I said, people have, have, you know, said things about me because they think because I'm in my own world. But, um, you know, it's just sometimes when we go out, we just need to release. Like, I love when the music is so loud that it's vibrating through my body. I will get as close to the speaker as possible, and I just want to dance my ass off, and I don't want nobody to bother me. But, of course, I got to have cute shoes on all the time, so it doesn't always work. But that's usually my, my go-to. <laughs> that's what I like to do. And I think that... At, at this age, um, you know, we, we know how to have fun, right? So we want to have fun. And that's why I am trying to host events and try to find the proper home for us. Because I think that we need to listen to old school music that we used to love. And we don't want to go out to a place where there are 20 and 30 year olds. Sorry, no offense to some of you 30 year olds that are on here. You know, we, I, you know, some of us, we, we want to deal in our own, you know, bracket and, you know, that's what we want to be around. And I don't want to be, I mean, we, I was doing an event and these girls, um, you know, were in their thirties, I believe, and they wanted to hear rap. 
and there was no way in hell we were going to play rap. Um, but we played that genre um, of our old school music. I mean, but it, we didn't play like whatever. I don't even know what's, I don't listen to it. So, um, you know, we didn't play rap from now. We played John, that genre from back in the day. So, you know, to me, that's, if that, you know, if you build it, they will come. So, you know, if I know, like I have, you know, someone that's dear to me, they only, only want freestyle. So if we go to a club and they're not playing freestyle, it's like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, there's got to be more than, you know, this. And everybody has their preference, right? So it is what it is. And, you know, you got to know what works for you. I mean, I am just as happy listening to freestyle dance my ass off as I am because you know me with my long haired men. You give me a, a blasting rock club and a good stiff drink. And a bunch of people in, you know, tank tops and ripped jeans and motorcycle boots. And I'm a happy camper. So it's all, it's all relative. Some nights you need to listen to Kill Your Mother music and drink. Some nights you need to go out dancing and just escape. Some nights you need to go to a wine and cheese bar and just chill. You know, it, it's, it's really, you know, everybody's different. And you know what? We all have different moods. Sometimes you're in the mood to just freaking like you had a long day. You just need to sit there. You need to pound down some drinks and you need to listen to some hardcore freaking rock. And then there are those nights that you need to get dressed up and you need to feel your sexiest and you need to go out dancing and maybe flirt or whatever it is that you need to do. Every, you know, every night's a different night. All right. So now. You guys better be behaving on this feed because I'm seeing some stuff over here and somebody's getting a spanking. <laughs> okay, um, where am I? Let me catch up here. Um, sorry, bear with me. I am checking out the feed. Yes, love casinos. Drama free is so awesome and how I choose. Yes, we all, you know what? At our age, who the F wants drama? Save your drama for your mama. I mean, who gives a shit? Go do what you got to do. Don't bother us. We know what we're doing. Leave me alone. Um, I would love to go to the casino. I've only been there a few times, but not the game. Resumed. Okay. Uh, Chrissy, me too. I go out to laugh, dance, and have a good time. Concerts, bands on the lake, craft shows, and home time. Richie, the nautical mile, Freeport, Long Island, day and night. Yeah, I have not been there yet. I, I've heard of it, but I haven't physically gotten there. Yeah, I am a Long Island fan. I find, so I say, and please guys, don't take this the wrong way. It's half a joke. I say we got Westchester assholes. We got Bronx assholes. We got, you know, uh, uh, Connecticut assholes. We got Jersey assholes. But I personally like the Long Island assholes the best. <laughs> so I do like Long Island as well. I love beach day or night, absolutely. Um, love to be anywhere by the ocean. Love the countryside as well. Rob, what's going on, kid? Uh, very true. I like a mature crowd. Music from 84 to 99, absolutely. Um, Dawn, how are you? Um, okay. Uh, what was that? Oh, don't, okay. Music, music does it all. Yeah, no doubt, Leslie. It does. It takes you into a place that you need to go to. So, you know, music is the answer. Um, okay. Classic. Yes. The, then again, as an artist, when we paint, it's metal and classic rock. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, hello, Maria. How are you? Um, yeah, so I guess that that was, um, that's where we were. Bronx assholes, watch your mouth. Ayo! <laughs> oh, look, everybody's, oh, now you're checking in. I got the Bronx asshole here. Now I got a, a Jersey one. You guys are the best. <laughs> Come on, you know I'm just messing with you, right? Half. 
I'm just messing with you. It's all good. Listen, it's all fun. I mean, this is Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. We are live on Facebook in my group as well. Um, yes, Rob Mush in the building. All right, that's good. We're, we're, we're all here. Thank you for trying to help me figure this out. Music is the key to happiness. Yes, that, tequila, oysters, and the water, um, and, you know, <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's like the jerk. All I need is tequila. All I need is tequila and oysters. All I need is tequila and oysters on the beach. All I need is tequila, oysters on the beach with music. See, you see how I, see where I'm going with this? You see the pattern I'm going with? <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So now... Okay, here's something that I need to, that I wanted to address as well. What do you think about disingenuous people? I have so many people that come to me and talk to me about different things, um, you know, and, and I just have this thing where people like to tell me things, which I'm, I feel very blessed that people feel so... Um, comfortable to speak with me but it's very interesting to me I guess people understand that you know yes I have a show it's called real talk but I really am a real talk if you and I say this all the time if you meet me in the street and you see me on the air I'm the same person if anything you get more out of me when you see me in person because I have to be a little more neutral on the radio show because you know, my views are my views and um, I am open to anyone else's views and opinions. So I think it's important, you know, to just be open and to be kind and to allow everyone to have their own feelings. But I have so many people say to me, you can see that they're just trying so hard. They really aren't themselves. Do you find that a lot of people, you know what I call it, right? Perpetrating the fraud. Do you find that a lot of people do perpetrate the fraud? And if the answer is yes, why? Why at 40, 50, 60 years old are you perpetrating the fraud? Why? Why can't you just own who you are? Like, why do you have to pretend? If you have to pretend that you're someone that you aren't, and people, and besides that, people see through it. Because they say, I've ha like I said, there are, I have conversations. You, they're just trying too hard, they would say. Why do they try so hard? Why can't they just be themselves? Do we feel this way? Do you feel that people are disingenuous? And do you feel that um, people are not themselves and that they are perpetrating the fraud? And if so, why? Why would you perpetrate the fraud? Why can't you just own it? We're all adults. Why can't you own it? All right, now let's go back to the videotape. No, we're going back to... Um, where am I? Okay. Love your show. MMR fam have to run. Thank you, Rob. You're the best. Um, perpetrating the fraud. Yes, Leslie Ann. But now I need some feedback on that. Uh, does anybody? They're in denial. I like it. You know what? That's very, that's a very accurate statement. In denial. Uh-huh. I like it. Um, and so again, why? Why is somebody... Why is someone in denial at 40, 50, 60 years old? Because it goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the show, that they didn't make peace with who and what they are. They didn't do the work to make themselves better. So therefore, they are in denial. So a lot of times, people that are like that are trying to, you know, they're, they're, they're spending their life trying to fool others into thinking that they're something that they're not. So are they, so if you say they're in denial, so they fooled themselves into thinking they are something that they're not, so therefore they're able to fool others into thinking that they're something that they're not? Would that be the right um, analogy there? Because I just don't get that. I don't get not being comfortable and owning your own skin. I just don't get it. I'm waiting for somebody to chime in here. The, the feed got quiet. I had people arguing on here. Stop arguing on my feed, damn it. <laughs> We're on live, and I am reading what you are writing. 
I do, you guys are my guests this evening, so I am very interested to see what you have to say. They still live in the past. Hmm. Okay, I guess so. I guess that would be, so then like I said earlier, they just didn't do the work. Um, what did you miss, Mel? Uh, yeah, they have baggage. Um, what you missed was, I just said, what do, what do people think about disingenuous people? Um, that there are a lot of people that say to me, um, you can see they are just trying too hard. They aren't really themselves. So I'm asking what people think about that. I'm not in, okay, you said, I'm not in denial. I just don't talk about myself. No, but that's the, right. But I'm talking about people that, uh, you know, are trying to be something other than who and what they are. So I don't think that not talking, you know, you don't talk about yourself. I don't think anybody should really talk about themselves if you actually think about that. I think that you should speak for yourself, meaning your presence and your, you know, who you are should speak for itself. So when someone is a disingenuous person, that does speak for itself because now you have people that see through that because they know that you are perpetrating the fraud because you're not really that amazing person that everybody, that you're trying to make people believe you are. People want to know the real you. And if you're you, then people will either love you or they won't, right? But you can't be something you aren't and then expect people to love you. So it's a, you know, that's what I was trying to say with um, being disingenuous. And I think that, um, you know, Raul saying um, about denial, meaning that they're in denial that they not they are not the person that they are portraying themselves to be. Um, so I think that was where the denial came from, uh, Leslie. So I don't know if we, yes, I, I figured you did misunderstand. That's why I wanted to clarify that. Um, you know, the, the denial is in the fact that they aren't the person that they portray themselves to be, um, which is very scary, <laughs> uh, especially at 40, 50, 60 years old. If you don't know who the hell you are at that point, what the hell do you have to offer anybody else if you can't even offer it to yourself, right? So bad scenario. Um, all right. And Mel, you was, you had asked what, where we were, but you, you didn't come back with me on that one. So, um, okay. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. People stay in their comfort zone. They're afraid to make a new leap. People are also afraid of change. A hundred percent. Um, yes. And, and reality is a tough pill to swallow, right? So, um, you know, it, 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 reality is a tough pill to swallow. And sometimes, you know, somebody may say to you, you know, uh, you think you're, I remember years ago, um, I thought I had it all figured out. I was like, I, you know, like, and somebody said to me, but you're like a nervous wreck. I go, what do you mean I'm a nervous wreck? Like, I thought that I had everybody fooled and no one knew I was a nervous wreck because I thought I covered it up really well. And then I learned I wasn't covering up shit. Everybody knew, everybody was like, what are you kidding me? You're a nervous wreck. And I'm like, oh my God, that's what people see. So people don't see the, the, the person I try to portray, the person I try to put, you know, out there and, and be strong and be put together. They see this nervous wreck. I really am. And then once somebody made that, made me aware of that, I said, wow, what am I putting out there? And then once I realized what I was putting out there, I re-evaluated and I acknowledged, okay, I am a nervous wreck. What am I going to do to change this? So yes, denial is a huge thing, um, you know, to, to think of here. And, and yes, teaching an old dog new tricks is not always easy. And most people do not want to hear the truth. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, Mel, I don't deal with that, that kind of people. I surround myself with positive people. If I see a fraud, BS, I call them out on their bull and walk away. I do not want them in my circle. I choose who's in it and who's out of it. Right. I mean, we can also, we can all choose that. But, you know, again, uh, you know, sometimes we're around these people by default uh, because they're a part of a, a group or because they've, 
uh, attach themselves to a group um, and they try to be something, you know, something more or less than who they actually are. Or, well, you know, not less, but they try to be more than who they are. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, you know, I feel like you want people to be genuine um, and people will respond accordingly. I think if you're an asshole and you own the fact that you're an asshole, I think people will have more respect for you um, with that than if you try to pretend you're not an asshole and you really are. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. All right. Um, so let's see. Where are we now? We are... Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. Um, Leslie, I have a glow and it's a wonderful feeling when strangers tell me that. Um, yes, I mean, and you know what? I had somebody say that to me too. I've had people say to me, you shine, you shine so bright. And um, I have worked very hard to try to change my energy and, um, you know, I guess that self-awareness is huge, right? And I talked about this at, at our last show as well. Self-awareness is huge and you need to know what you're putting out there so that you know what you're getting back. Um, so shine bright, Leslie. Um, it is a wonderful feeling to glow because it, it comes from the inside out. So God bless. Um, Gabriella, they're part of a cult. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. How are you? Um, okay, so where am I now? We 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 were where I did station identification. Uh, we talked about that. Let's see. We talked. Well, we got a lot. All things considered, we really talked about a lot of stuff today. Um, let's see where else there was a couple of things that I had wanted to talk about. And, um, I have to catch up and see where I am here. Um, well, yeah, here, this goes on to it, it kind of the, um, kind of the same type of thing. You know, what about sabotage? What do you think about people that try to sabotage you, basically? Um, you know, like defamation of character, um, and people that try to sabotage you, they try to make you look bad. Um, maybe from jealousy, maybe from envy, um, you know, and, and this could be friends. This could be even, uh, work related, you know, um, you could work someplace and do a fabulous job. And, um, then the, 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 your ex boss or whatever the person you were working for tells you what a great job you did, but then tells the person next to them, oh yeah, they're not here anymore because I had to get rid of them, you know, because we didn't need them. So I think that, um, I don't ever understand why someone thinks that they look better making someone else look worse. So you know, what do you, do you feel that people can sabotage you? I mean, I think that the truth always comes out. Um, I think that, uh, eventually, you know, there's always like three sides to the story, right? There's your side, their side, and then there's the truth. And I think that the truth always comes out and it may take years. I mean, it's like karma, right? Like some of us, we feel like we're not going to see that karma because, um, people, you know, you, maybe in this lifetime, we won't see it. Right. But, um, I think karma definitely happens, but, uh, you know, I never understood trying to make somebody else. I think it's an insecurity, right? If you try to sabotage, like you don't want somebody to, to like that person because you want them to like you. And I think that you should allow people to like who they want to, um, you know, and, and that's just, you know, my opinion. All right, hold on. I see you got haters. I, all right, hold on a second, ladies. Where are we here? Um, okay. Um, you mean haters. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. There were other conversations. I'm trying to keep up here. 
I, I guess they are haters, um, but, I, you know, I, I just, I never really understood that term. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, it, it happens in business. It happens in pleasure. Uh, for some reason, people, okay, yeah, Raul, jealousy. I just, I, I just never really got all of that, um, you know. Uh, and then the, the question, too, at that point is, do people really have your back? So is somebody going to turn around and stand up for you? Maybe if you're not there to stand up for yourself, you know, if you fall, is someone going to help pick you up? So if I'm someplace and I, I, people can attest to this. I set people straight on a lot of things. I will call it like it is. And if something goes down, I will call it like it is. And I will not throw anybody under a bus. Um, but I will, not that I, I mean, I would defend somebody if, if it needed to be. I try to stay neutral with things. I listen to this person. I listen to that person. But I think that, you know, sometimes you have to put somebody in their place. And, and I find, I've done it. And I've spoken on behalf of friends of mine and my friends that I've spoken on behalf of say, well, why did you say anything? Why did you say, and I was like, wait a minute. And then, well, what did you say? Did you, does he, does, do they know that I said, I said, absolutely not. They don't know anything. I was making a statement and I told this person how I felt about it. And you know, if you're wrong, you're wrong and I'll call you on it. And I will do it in a very neutral way so that I can defend my friend. But the funny thing is, is that then when you defend your friend, you find yourself defending yourself because the person you were defending your friend to tells a whole other story than what the story actually was. So sometimes you're better off keeping your mouth shut because other people don't take it at that. They listen to the person that changed the whole story around so it benefited them as opposed to and then made you feel look bad in the process um again a verbally strong say true you know to family and friends <laughs> gabriella say karen it's true though you know okay here we go see look now i'm getting it okay that happens at work before I left from the, the M, New York City Department of Ed, the, the two persons that were co-workers uh, had it backfire and their plans didn't work. Just made the co-workers um, that they told I was speaking bad about them more aware they were haters trying to get me in trouble or fired. They only made themselves look bad. And guess what? That is why I say the truth always comes out. But unfortunately, sometimes you got to wait for it because it doesn't always come out right away. Because people that lie and people that may, that perpetrate the fraud and make shit up, they have a very good way of protecting themselves so that they protect the truth from coming out and they, they still have that ability to make you look bad. I don't like when someone tries my patience. <laughs> yeah, Leslie, I don't like it either. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do think that it's, what's up, John? How are you, Diana? Um, Mary, how are you, love? Bill, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, bring the ugly out of me, I dare you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. And, and people do, they test you, but you can't lower yourself to their standards, right? You have to rise above and you have to allow people to be a certain way. But when I hear people talk about somebody and I don't like it, um, I do interject, especially if it's somebody that I care about. And I mean, even just recently, I've met different people and I don't scotch. You know, if, if I'm gonna be talking to this person or talking to that person, then it's a separate entity and, and we can all be friends and we can all talk. I don't do anything to, to nudge another person because if I want to, if I want to cause trouble, I can cause trouble all by myself. I don't need to involve anybody else into that. Um, someone that doesn't speak the truth needs to be checked and slapped both at the same time. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes it's not your truth. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's if the truth belongs to another person. So that's when it becomes a little bit tricky 
because, um, like I said, I speak the truth. And if I see something that's going on and I don't like it, I open up my mouth and if, and usually it has nothing to do with me. So like I said, the people it involved, sometimes it comes back and bites me in the ass because they misinterpreted where I was coming from. And the only way that I can attest to that is that I can say that that person doesn't really know me because anybody that knows me knows that I always speak from the heart. I have no malice in any words that I say. Sometimes the things I say don't come out right and I'll, I'll give people that, but I don't like when people talk badly about somebody or they, they, they're saying stuff like they're the ones in the right and when I contradict that, then there becomes an issue. But I can't leave it alone because if you're wrong, you're wrong and I'm going to tell you about it. And I'm not saying that I'm the judge and juror, but at the same token, it's like, okay, so what about this? And then you keep coming back at me with the same answer. All right, so then if that's your answer, then let them know that that's your answer and own it. Don't sit here and go argue with me back and forth. I'm not the person you got to worry about. Um, okay, people are, hold on. People are, people feel threatened and envious. It's hard to trust people in general. Uh, not everyone who smiles at you is your friend. Some people open themselves up to this sabotage. Uh, just tuned in, John, what's the topic? We've been all over the place with topics. Right now, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, people trying to sabotage you. Sabotage, as uh, Bugs Bunny would say. Um, oh, yeah, Karen will start trouble. Yeah, that's me. I'm the troublemaker. I'm the truth teller. I'm like a, a Wonder Woman with the magic lasso. Uh, they have uh, recorders nowadays on our cell phones. Bust them. It's the only way. Yeah, you know, and that's true. I I've never actually done that before. Um, I do feel a little bit like that's an infringement on somebody's, um, you know, uh, a privacy. But at the same token, if it's something that relevant, then you do have to. Like if it's something really that important, then you do have to um, video it uh, or record it or whatever you want to call it. I, I mean, I, I hate to say that, but you kind of do, right? Because the proof is in the pudding, like my father would always say. So, you know, if, if it's there and you can use it, but for me personally, it's not worth it at that point. Because to be honest with you, if I got to sit there and prove to this one and that one, but it, you know what, I'm done. I, I won't ever say anything on your behalf again. I apologize, forgive me, and it will never happen again. Uh, if someone talks shit about someone else, then they talk it about you too. Yeah, and you know what, and that's probably true. Um, you know, if, if people talk out of two sides of their mouth, they talk out of two sides of their mouth. I personally think that, you, you know, people should know where you stand at all times. And that's just my own opinion. Um, and, you know, sometimes, like my husband would tell me, you don't always have to say what you're thinking. Um, and I think that that's true. But sometimes you got to let people know. And, uh, you know, people got to be schooled a little bit. And, and you know, it, it happens. But... I just don't like when people manipulate a situation to benefit themselves. That's the part that I don't like. It's one thing if you're full of shit, but it's another thing if you're manipulating a situation to sabotage another situation or another human being. That's the part that I don't like. You know, if you want to talk shit, talk shit, whatever, it don't really matter. At the end, it's all going to come out. But not if it's somebody's reputation, not if you're sabotaging someone at work, you know, and all of that, that's not cool because you're cutting into someone's livelihood. You're cutting into things that are very important to certain people. And I don't think that that's cool. Um, Leslie, you just said the freen scro the screen, the freen scrolls, <laughs> the, the screen froze. I think I'm still good over here. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe try to refresh. Um, if that, if that works, um, School them, Karen. <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't sure what that what that was, but um, yeah, uh, you know, well, that's how I feel. Um, you know, and and I just, you know, listen. Some of us are real, and we call it like it is, and that's just how it goes. So, uh, I think you should know what you're working with. And sometimes people are nastier than others, um, but sometimes people just say it like it is, and so you should. 
Um, so let's see. Um, again, that's my question. You know, like, do people really have your back? You know, or do they have your back as far as they may go? You know, um, so that's like the question. You know, I, I, I have people all the time and, you know, they, I got you, I got you, I got you back, I got you back. I don't like when people say that, to be quite honest with you, because people don't have your back. They may have it to a certain degree, but they really don't have your back because it's impossible. Because unless they're your husband or your wife, or maybe it's your best friend, I don't know. But you can't always have somebody's back because we all got our own lives to live. You know, I have people that'll say to me, well, yeah, you know, uh, 20 years ago, I would have taken care of that for you. But now I can't take care of that for you because, you know, I got to worry about this. I got to worry about that. Life is different now. We're adults, you know, and, and, and things come first. So, you know what? I think it's, I don't like when people say, I got you, I got your back because it's a false sense of security. Um, maybe you stand behind someone, maybe you support them, but to have someone's back is a very, um, that's a, that's a, that's a packing statement. And I think you should choose that wisely whenever you use it. And that's just my own personal opinion. Uh, okay, let's see. I got that in Florida right now. The millennial chick always causing drama, constantly talking about everyone in my group of friends. Half the time she's drunk. She manipulates everyone around her and has twisted so much shit around me. John, walk away. She's not worth hanging out with. Keep your distance. Trying Mel, but she always says, I'm sorry, and like a sucker, I get dragged back in, but I'm done with her. Well, you know what, John? The truth of the matter is, is that you're not done till you're done. So now that you see, see, the manipulation is, again, the part that I don't like. It's one thing to just be a jerk. It's another thing to manipulate the situation and then to play the sorry card on top of that. You're too old for that. Um, you know, all of us are, you know, that's, that's the red flags that we were just talking about earlier. You see that red flag, you, you, who deals with that? I don't want, I mean, I, I was pulled into this not that long ago myself by someone and they were very good at what they did. And then you realize that you are truly being manipulated and that these people are not as innocent as they portray themselves to be. So as you get the proof, you need to keep it moving and not put yourself back in that situation because you can't be a sucker because now all you're doing is hurting yourself because this person is going to continue to do that. So this is my point. When people manipulate a situation um, and they try to sabotage you, those are people you need to get the hell away from and they're never going to change. So they're going to continually manipulate other people around you and it's never going to benefit or work out for you so these are things that you have to keep in mind in my opinion um and and not deal with that kind of stuff because sabotage and manipulation are just not anything that any human being should be around in my opinion so um we actually are pretty much at the almost two hour mark i thank you guys i know some of you have stayed with me some of you have been on and off some have peeked in and peeked off um, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, being part of the show and, and talking with me through this. Um, you know, I do try to change it up. I try to have guests. I try to, um, you know, talk to you one-on-one -on -one as well. Um, you know, some people tell me they enjoy the show with just myself. Some people enjoy it with the guests. So I try to kind of give everybody a little bit of what they want. Uh, the past couple of weeks, uh, scheduling the guests have definitely been challenging between the weather here in New York and who, you know, doesn't feel well. I mean, life happens and the show must go on. So I do my best to, uh, go with my plan B's and just make it happen for you guys. Um, and I appreciate you sticking along with me. Um, also, so let me just read here. Uh, let's see. I was lucky that I was there for over 10 years and I stood up and said, has anyone here ever had a problem with me? All my coworkers said or nodded no. Um, 
that was to prove that I wasn't going to start shit where I worked for over 10 years. The two co-workers that wanted to get me in trouble were not happy. Well, of course not, because the truth shall set you free. Um, narcissist, narcissistic people are the worst. Just run, everyone. See the red flags? It's hard to open your eyes. You are number one. Yeah, she's pretty hot, but she's psychotic. Well, John, you know what? Then go for it. Go ahead, bang her. See what happens. I can't. I can't, John. See, this is why men, you're the best. So um, this weekend is um, Anthony Mangini's uh, birthday bash. I believe it is Anthony and Glenn Frischa and Tony Sanapi. They're going to be on the mix. I think Noel is going to be performing. That is going to be at Noma Social in New Rochelle, New York. That is Saturday night. There is no admission fee. Um, so come down, party, bring your friends, do what you got to do. Um, it's a hotel, so if you don't want to drink and drive and you can't Uber, feel free to spend the night, get a room. Um, but I hope you guys come down. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the next couple of weeks, I will be having guests as long as, you know, the universe and everybody works with me here. Um, I know some people have mentioned topics. Please feel free. You can email me. You can private message me. Whatever you leave a comment, whatever you feel comfortable with, I am happy to discuss anything. Uh, sometimes just talking about a situation can help you to see a different perspective. And that's what I try to do here on, um, on Real Talk is give people a different perspective. Uh, so if anybody watching the show or listening to the show found one thing today that made them think differently, then I feel good and my heart is, is good. So um, thank you, Gabriella, for participating. Thank you for the kind words. Um, you guys have been great. Thank you for, um, yes, you can private message me. If whatever works um, for you guys, if you want it privately, please feel free. Um, I am here and I am happy to talk about any subject you want to talk about. Um, you know, have any, you know, if somebody wants to be a guest on the show, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, I, I am booking up, so let me know, but I, I love any new interaction. I love to learn different things. I love to see a different perspective. So please, um, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. As long as you keep it real, we're good. So I don't know that I have an updated version of, um, our talk show, of our shows, um, on Miami Mike Radio at this point, but um, I know Mondays we have uh, every other month. Well, actually, we start off with uh, the the ride home with the Portuguese Prince, um, D, uh, DJ Pauly, and that is uh, six p.m. to nine p.m. on Mondays, and then Mind Candy Mondays uh, we have um, DJ Rob Mush. He's on, I believe, one Monday a month at this point. Uh, Tuesdays during the day, we had, uh, Steve, DJ Simply Nice from one to three. Um, we also have Wednesdays. I, I believe late DJ Lady E is on at 7 PM. Uh, Wednesdays is the Mayhem Loyal Listener Show with Hamilton, Czar, and May May, and that's 8.30 PM. Uh, Thursdays is Gino Caffarelli with the throwback in the day, um, and then we have the Traffic Jam with DJ Michael Anthony on Thursdays as well. Fridays, we have C, DJ Simply Nice from 8 to 10. Um, then Friday Night Sessions with uh, Tony Sinopi. Saturdays, we have the Gazi Show with DJ Gazi. We have our Anthony Mangini that does his pop-ups. Um, I think we have another new show on, and I believe it's on Mondays from 1 to 3, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I, I'm bad. I don't have the names written down. I have to get an updated list. So I apologize if I screwed anything up. I love you all. Um, but uh, I'm lucky I know my name. And after two hours of talking, I can't think straight. <laughs> but I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Anybody that knows how to do the Facebook Live and add somebody, not using the app, but doing it on 
Facebook Live on the computer. That would be awesome if you could help me to learn to do that. So as always, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Tuesday, and I will see you next week or over the weekend or whatever the case may be. Thank you. Yes, Luke, I can't pronounce his last name, Jalaja, or he's on Mondays. So I'm just going to call him Luke because I can't say his last name. So I knew it was a complicated last name. But Luke is on Mondays at 1 to 3, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Rob? You guys are the best. You know the lineup better than, than we do. That's so awesome. So thank you guys again for tuning in to Real Talk with Karen Stacy on MiamiMikeRadio.com. Love you. Till next time. <laughs>